بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Today we will start with the last article of faith uh, We've covered already five of the six uh, articles or pillars of faith And today is the last one In, in which the Prophet وسلم, After he was asked by Jibreel about the, uh, the pillars or articles of faith He mentioned uh, the five And then when he came to the sixth The Prophet وسلم, said وَأَن تُؤْمِنَ بِالْقَدَرِ خَيْرِهِ وَشَرِّهِ And to believe in predestiny or predestination the good and evil about it or of it now the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not repeat the word and to believe and to believe in the first five the first five he said to believe in allah and in his angels in his books in his messengers and then he was just listing the Pillars without repeating the word and to believe and to believe. When he came to this one, he repeated and he said, and to believe in predestination, the good and evil about it. Now scholars said the reason he sallallahu alayhi wasallam repeated this word here to believe is to put emphasis on this particular pillar because it is the one in which people fall in problems or about which people have problems and make mistakes and deviate and therefore he wanted to emphasize by repeating the word and to believe as a matter of fact the entire hadith was about or started uh, when ibn umar was asked about people who do not believe in qadr and then he gave them the hadith of jibreel uh, now, what evidences do we have? What proofs we have about Al-Qadr from Quran and Sunnah? Allah Azza wa Jal says, Inna kulla shay'in khalaqnahu bi qadr. Verily, we have created everything according to our predestination. And he says, illa ma katab Allahu lana. Say nothing will befall us except what Allah Azza wa Jal has predestined to us. And in the book of Imam uh, Muslim, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and he was given an advice to the companions. He said, do not, if something befalls you, do not say, if only I had done such and such, then such and such would have happened. And people usually say this in remorse and regret. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, rather you should say, this is the predestiny of Allah, this is the qadr of Allah, this is the decree of Allah, and Allah did what he willed. And then he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, explained why we should not use terms like, if only our, uh, I've done this, or had I done such and such. He said, because this, and the like of which, only opens the gate or the door for satanic thoughts. Because shaitan, strives hard to bring sorrow and grief and depression and sadness to the hearts of the believers because once a believer he or she have submitted to the, to this to depression and sadness and then they would give up they would not do anything they would not strive they would not become a productive element they would just sit still and do nothing and think about the past all the time. Oh, this happened and this, I should have done this and I would have. So shaitan is very keen on making you regret things and sorrowful about things. Whilst this in essence will not change anything from the past. That's why it is advice for those who start thinking this way to remember that, okay, let me think about today. You see, there are three days for each of us. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Yesterday is the past. It's finished. Nothing can be done about it. Tomorrow is the future. You don't know anything about it. And today is what you live in. So live today. Enjoy today. Be happy with Allah for whatever He brings for you today. Right. 
another narration in the book uh, in the books of Al Bukhari and Muslim. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Each of you, or none of you, was created, except that his spot in Jannah and his spot." or his spot in Jahannam or in fire was recorded. It's written already. So the companions said, O Messenger of Allah, so why should we strive? Can't we just rely on this? He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, strive. And in another narration, he said, no. Rather, you should strive because each of you will be or the, the, the deeds for each of you will be facilitated. He will find it easy to do the deeds that will lead him to the destination or his destined place, whether that's Jannah or Jahannam Iyadam Billah. He said, each of you will find the path towards the place for which he was predestined and for which he was created, facilitated and easy. And then he recited sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, فَأَمَّا مَنْ أَعْطَى وَاتَّقَى وَصَدَّقَ بِالْحُسْنَى فَسَنُيَسِّرُهُ لِلْيُسْرَى وَأَمَّا مَنْ بَخِلَ وَاسْتَغْنَى وَكَذَّبَ بِالْحُسْنَى فَسَنُيَسِّرُهُ لِلْعُسْرَى As for he who gives charity and fears Allah and believes in the best, meaning the reward for spending charity, we will facilitate for them the way of goodness but as for he who withholds he's stingy he doesn't spend and considers himself free of need they don't need Allah and denies the best reward we will facilitate for them the way to hardship or evil now this narration proves that deeds whether good deeds or bad deeds we're all decreed by Allah Azza wa Jal. Good deeds that lead to happiness, which is also decreed by Allah Azza wa Jal. And bad deeds that lead to regret and punishment and misery are also decreed. And this misery is also decreed by Allah Azza wa Jal. So nothing goes beyond the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal. Every matter and the means leading to it, everything is predestined by Allah Azza wa Jal. There's a great hadith that was reported by Al-Imam Al-Tirmidhi, and it was graded or classed by Al-Albani as authentic. It is the famous hadith of Ibn Abbas when he was a young boy. He said, I was riding behind the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and it's a long narration. I will just choose a uh, few sentences from it that uh, I want to emphasize. He said, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, O oh, young boy, I will teach you few words so you memorize them. And amongst these words, he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, know that if the Ummah, in other words, if the word of the entire world have gathered trying to benefit you with a thing, a thing. They will not be able to benefit you with anything except for that which Allah Azza wa Jal had decreed for you. And if they were to gather to try to attempt to harm you in a thing, they will not be able to harm you in anything except for that which Allah Azza wa Jal had decreed for you. The pens have been lifted and uh, the records have dried. The pens have been lifted, meaning everything has been recorded and the, the, uh, the records have dried, meaning the ink has dried. In other words, it's a matter for saying that the matter is concluded. All decrees have been recorded from uh, the day of creation until the hereafter. Now, Believing in predestination in the Qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal has four main elements that one must believe in in order for him or her 
to be truly believing in Al-Qadr, in decree or predestination. Knowledge. We must firmly believe that everything that happens and that happened and that will happen is known by Allah Azza wa Jal in His eternal and infinite knowledge in time. Allah's knowledge is, was not preceded by a stage where He did not know. Allah's knowledge is eternal about all matters. And His knowledge does not is not renewed. In other words, there's nothing that takes place that he will know now about it. It is eternal. It is infinite in time. So Allah Azza wa Jal has known what his creation, his creatures will do, will say. Obedience, disobedience. He knew subhanahu wa ta'ala their rizq, their provision. He knew their death times, when they will born and when they will die. All of these matters and everything else was, uh, are things that are known or were known by Allah Azza wa Jal before they even happened or people were created or the universe was created. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, وَعِنْدَهُ مَفَاتِحُ الْغَيْبِ لَا يَعْلَمُهَا إِلَّا هُو ويعلم ما في البر والبحر وما تسقط من ورقة إلا يعلمها ولا حبة في ظلمات الأرض ولا رطب ولا يابس إلا في كتاب مبين. This is an astonishing verse. Allah Azza wa Jal says this and the meaning of this is With him are the keys of the unseen. No one knows them except him. He knows what is in the land and the sea. And not a leaf falls without his knowledge, nor a grain in the darknesses of the earth, or anything fresh or dry, which can mean alive or dead, but is written in a clear, in a clear record. The keys of the unseen, as the Prophet ﷺ uh, explained and referred in a verse in the Qur'an, uh, it is Allah Azza wa Jal knows when the hour will take place. He knows about rain, when, where, and how much of it will fall. And he knows what forms in the womb before it does, and its destiny and fate. And he knows subhanahu wa ta'ala when people will die, and what they will do in their lives, good or evil, and their final destination in the hereafter. Let's reflect about some of the words in this. وَمَا تَسْقُطُ مِنْ وَرَقَةٍ إِلَّا يَعْلَمُهَا Not a leaf falls except with his knowledge, except that he knows about it. If you try to imagine, let's, let's just zoom in very close. Go to a park in the place where you live and look at the number of trees you have, 10, 50, 100, 500, depending on the size of the yard. Some people's backyards have three, four trees. How many leaves on each tree? If you try to imagine the knowledge of Allah Azza wa Jal and what it all encompasses, it's amazing. Can you imagine how many billions of trees there are in the world. Now, multiply these billions by another, I don't know, millions. In one of the uh, statistics in a certain area in the United States, this was done years back. The number of leaves that formed in that area, and it wasn't a large area, was four times 10 to the power of 16. That's a lot. Now Allah Azza wa Jal knew before they were even grow, they have grown, that they will grow in that particular spot, and each tree will have this number of leaves, and each leaf will fall at a certain time, at a given second, and it will take a certain path. You know, leaves don't just drop like this. They swing like this as they go. They, they might strike a branch here, the wind takes it to the other side. 
until it lands in a precise spot. And all of that, for all of these leaves, all of that was in the knowledge of Allah Azza wa Jal subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is scary because we're often heedless of this. And we do things not considering that Allah knows. We sin. We transgress the boundaries. Forgetting that Allah Azza wa Jal is seeing. And without shame we do that. We ask Allah to forgive us. وَلَا رَطْبٍ وَلَا يابس. Nothing fresh or dry, moist or dry, alive or dead. This uh, includes anything that can be in existence or that is created. And if you, if you uh, consider the example I gave for trees, and apply it for everything else in this life. Your brain will freeze. You'll be astonished. All of this knowledge by Allah Azza wa Jal, and none of this knowledge, his knowledge about fish, about animals, about humans, about jinn, about trees, about soil, about sea, about oceans, about rivers, about stars, about galaxies, none of that distracts him. It's all perfect knowledge and perfect creation by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Glory be to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second uh, element which we must firmly believe in is the recording of everything. We must firmly believe that Allah Azza wa Jal had everything that was predestined recorded in the preserved template before Allah Azza wa Jal even created the heavens and the earth. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَكُلُّ صَغِيرٍ وَكَبِيرٍ مُسْتَطَرٍ Every small or large matter or thing has been recorded. In the book of Imam Muslim, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah has recorded the fates of all creatures 50,000 years before he created the heavens and earth. What does this, just a small comment here. When you think about this, that everything that takes place or will take place with me in my life has been recorded 50,000 years before anything was ever created, then becoming fussy about it, becoming discontent, becoming angry, slamming the door, breaking the, the phone, doing whatever crazy acts or reactions to something that you consider to be bad, will not change anything, to say the least. And if we are wise, we need to immediately, when we're struck with something that we consider to be bad or evil or displeasant or um, unpleasant or disappointing, we need to think that, wait a minute, this has already been recorded. It will take place. It took place, so I can't do anything to erase it and bring it into another form. So let me deal with it as a qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal which he has chosen for me, and go on in life. In another narration, the Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by a Tirmidhi, graded as or classed as uh, authentic by Al-Albani. Uh, he said, the first thing that Allah Azza wa Jal had created was the pen. And he said to it, the Almighty said to the pen, write or record. The pen said, O oh my Lord, what should I record? So Allah said, record the decrees, everything that was decreed until the hour. All matters until the hour. So everything was recorded. 
And this is the second point. So whatever befalls you will never miss you. And whatever missed you was never meant to befall you. So just live, live life according to that. The third element that we, or, or point that we need to firmly believe in in order to be uh, completely and truly believers in uh, Al-Qadr is the will of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal has a will and has the power to fulfill His will. And nothing takes place in His dominion except what He wants, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَن يَشَاءَ اللَّهِ And you do not will unless Allah wills. You do not will unless Allah wills. So if Allah had not willed for something to happen, it will never happen. The, last, the fourth and the last uh, point or element of, of these four elements or rather levels is creation. We must firmly believe that Allah Azza wa Jal has created everything, including His creatures, their actions, and their qualities, and their descriptions. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَاللَّهُ خَلَقَكُمْ وَمَا تَعْمَلُونَ Allah Azza wa Jal has created you and that which you do. So Allah Azza wa Jal created me and you and created the actions we will do. So everything was created by Allah Azza wa Jal. Whether it is something that is only done by Him, like for example, given life and, and uh, causing death, or causing plants to grow or bringing rain down, this is all the actions of Allah Azza wa Jal. Or matters or deeds of the slaves and the creatures. Everything that is done, is done by the will of Allah and Allah Azza wa Jal has created it. Now, let me explain a bit. The action of the human being stems from two things. His will and his ability to implement his will. You want something and you have the power to do that thing. So all actions stem from these two things. Now, the will and the ability are qualities of the slave, of this human being. And these qualities are created by Allah. And since they are the cause of the resulting action, then even the action was created by Allah. Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi alayhi, in his famous book, Majmu' al-Fatawa, summarized the faith of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah with regards to Al-Qada wal-Qadr, Al-Qada wal-Qadr, decree and predestination. He said, the opinion of Ahl Sunnah wal-Jama'ah in this matter and all other matters is based on the text of the Quran and the Sunnah and the understanding of the previous, the, the early generation of the Muhajireen and Ansar and those who followed into their footsteps. And then he elaborated. He said, and this is to believe that Allah Azza wa Jal has created everything. And included in that is the actions of the slaves and other than humans as well. And that he subhanahu wa ta'ala only what he wills happens, and what he does not will will never happen. And nothing takes place except with his will and his ability, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is nothing or no or anyone, there is no one or nothing that can prevent Allah Azza wa Jal from doing what he wills. Rather, he is all capable of doing all that he wants, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they believe that he subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what had happened and what will happen. And listen to this. And the matter that is not predestined to happen, had it happened, how it will happen. Subhanallah. This is not to leave anything out 
of the knowledge of Allah Azza wa or out of the circle of the knowledge of Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah Azza wa Jal has decreed for his, crea- his creatures everything before he created them, their death time, their provisions, their deeds, and he had recorded all of that. And he had recorded what their fate will be, whether they'll be happy or miserable. And the early generation and the scholars have agreed that whoever takes Al-Qadr, predestination, as a justification to refrain from doing something he is ordered to do by Allah or to do something that he is commanded to refrain from or to reject any text that includes the promise of Jannah or the threat of uh, of Jahannam, then this is a great misguidance and it's a great lie against Allah Azza wa Jal and it opposes the religion of Allah Azza wa Jal and it is done by Al-Qadaris, those who believe. Now we'll explain that inshallah later. And then he continued, and another thing that the early generation of the Ummah and the, the scholars of the Ummah have agreed on, in addition to believing in the Qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal, is that Allah Azza wa Jal has given the slaves or that the slaves have their own will and their own ability based on which they act. And Allah Azza wa Jal has enabled them to act upon these two. Allah Azza wa Jal gave them the will and the ability to act upon the will and the action is all facilitated by Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, this is, he continues to, to quote this or to cite this verse, لِمَنْ شَاءَ مِنْكُمْ أَنْ يَسْتَقِيمُ وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهُ رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ For whoever wills among you to take the right path and you do not will except that Allah wills the Lord of the worlds. Now, these are the four matters. If any of them is absent, then one's belief in Al-Qadr is not complete. To summarize the reality of belief in Al-Qadr, we say, and this is extracted from the statement of Ibn Taymiyyah, we submit to the fact and firmly believe that everything was created by Allah Azza wa Jal, however, it is the action of the slave. Or else it will not be fair for Allah Azza wa Jal to hold us accountable for it. If it's something that we're forced to do, it's done and we have no say about it, then why should we be held accountable and be punished for it? Uh, there are a couple of points, or maybe three points left uh, in this regard. Uh, the creation of evil. And this is a point about which people are confused, or some people are confused, and some people uh, cast doubts and misconceptions about Islam regarding this creation of evil. Allah Azza wa Jal, as we said, has created everything, good and evil. And everything is decreed. Allah Azza wa Jal says, Allahu khaliqu kulli shay. Allah is the creator of everything. And everything here encompasses good and bad, good and evil. So every good and every evil has been decreed by Allah Azza wa Jal and was created by Allah Azza wa Jal. As for the dua of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and this is reported by Muslim, he said, وَالْخَيْرُ كُلُّهُ فِي يَدَيْكَ All goodness is in your hands. وَالشَّرُّ لَيْسَ إِلَيْكَ 
And evil is not attributed to, do, to you. Now, does this mean that evil is not from Allah or was not created by Allah? And it happened without his decree? No. It simply means that Allah Azza wa Jal does not create or decree something that is evil and purely evil without a wisdom. Or Allah Azza wa Jal, it also means Allah Azza wa Jal does not create anything that will be of no benefit in some way or the other. Because what is evil to you at face value may appear after a while to be the best that could have done, happened to you in your life. I'll give you an example. People say, oh, our brothers and sisters in Palestine, in Syria, in Yemen, in this and that uh, are being bombarded, are being killed. This is evil, isn't it? Of course it is. It's bad. It breaks the heart, brings tears to the eye. But is it evil? As in purely evil? Number one, those who are killed by the enemies of Allah Azza wa Jal are inshallah accept, uh, included in, uh, uh, with Allah Azza wa Jal as martyrs and they will be admitted into Jannah. The struggle between truth and falsehood is something that purifies the faith of the believers and distinguishes the lines and the ranks of the believers. Those who are hypocrites will appear in such times and those who are true in their faith will also appear and be known. There are many wisdoms behind that. So, it is not a pure evil. Allah does not create anything that is purely evil. And we'll talk about this inshallah and give more examples in, in the uh, second session. Now, being polite when talking about evil and attributing it to Allah Azza wa Jal. Scholar said, number one, you don't attribute evil to Allah alone. You say Allah creates good and evil. Everything is created by Allah, good and evil. Allah created this good and this evil. But you don't say Allah is the creator of evil alone, out of being polite to Allah Azza wa and you should make it included in the general saying of Allah, Inna kulla shay'in khalaqnahu biqadar. Indeed, everything we have created according to our predestination. So use these general terms. Allah Azza wa Jal <coughs> informs us in the Quran about the good manners of jinn when they wanted to speak about evil. They, Allah says, وَأَنَّا لَا نَدْرِي أَشَرٌ أُرِيدَ بِمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ أَمْ أَرَادَ بِهِمْ رَبُّهُمْ رَشَدًا And we do not know whether evil is intended to those on earth. Now, is intended, did not attribute evil here to Allah. You see the politeness in the usage of words. And we do not know whether evil is intended to those on earth. Or their Lord intends for them what is right, guidance. When it came to something good, the usage of the word Lord, their Lord, and attributing this good and guidance and righteousness to Allah Azza wa Jal. So evil cannot be attributed to Allah Azza wa Jal as a name because all his names are beautiful subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or as a quality because all his actions, subhanahu wa ta'ala, are based on wisdom. And therefore, we need to be careful when we talk about Allah Azza wa Jal and attributing qualities or describing things and attributing that to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, an important point with which I will conclude tonight's session. 
Does the qadr of Allah change? Can it change? Since we said that everything was created by Allah Azza wa based on his predestination and based on what he had decreed and that he had recorded everything in the preserved template. Then everything in that preserved template that was recorded must happen without change. Okay. What, what proves this? The hadith of Ibn Abbas which we cited earlier which is reported by Tirmidhi. Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu at the end said, pins have, been, pins have been lifted and records have dried. Everything is finished. Everything is recorded and it will take place according to what's in that preserved template. What about the hadith, which is also in a Tirmidhi, reported by a Tirmidhi and graded or classed as sound by Al Albani, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, nothing can prevent predestiny whatever evil is decreed, in other words, except dua, except supplicating Allah Azza wa Jal. What does that mean? How can we uh, act upon this and upon this, the hadith of Ibn Abbas and about the firm belief that everything is preserved and, and recorded and will happen according to that? Okay. We must know that Allah Azza wa Jal had created everything and had created the means, the reasons for things to happen. So the way to understand both these two texts together is to say that Allah Azza wa Jal had decreed dua as a means. And evil is happening. And he subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed for a person to supplicate and this dua will stop this evil, evil from happening and therefore it stops and it doesn't befall the, the, the person and the final result is what you will see, what is uh, recorded in the preserved template. And that's why the scholars say there are two types of qadr, temporary qadr and the final permanent one. The one we're talking about, or the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was talking about, is that temporary qadr. For which Allah Azza wa Jal may decree something to change it or not. But the final result that happens at the end is that permanent qadr. The permanent predestination that is recorded in the preserved template and will absolutely happen according to what is recorded there. So Allah Azza wa Jal creates or decrees matters and creates and decrees means as well. And all are created and decreed by Allah Azza wa Jal. I hope this uh, was not too difficult to, to grasp. I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to benefit us all from what we hear and to make us amongst those who hear and act upon what they hear. Allahumma ameen. With this, I will conclude tonight's session. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu alayk.